this is a video about how to play Cripple Creek, which is basically everyone's, well, most people's first tune on the banjo. Uh, it's kind of the smoke on the water of the banjo in a way, um, in the way that everyone plays it first. But when I say that, and people say it quite a lot, um, don't be misled into thinking that it's therefore as easy as smoke on the water is to play on guitar, because there's lots of tricky bits to play um, for Cripple Creek. But having said that, it means once you get through it, and you do have to kind of, you know, when you're first learning how to play banjo, you really do have to work your way through it bit by bit. Once you're through it, you're set up to play most things on banjo quite well, actually, because everything that you need to do is practice within this tune. You've got like right hand dum ditties, slides, hammer ons, pull offs, things like that. Uh, the three main chords you're kind of going to use. Um, yeah, so once you get used to it, 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 yeah, there's a reason we learn it first. It's because it's the best tune to learn first. It's simple enough that you can learn it first, and it just sets you up so well to do everything else. So let's just get into it properly. We're gonna go through this slowly, painstakingly, because this is really for like beginners. Um, it is a beginner tune, but a lot of videos online just don't go through it. Uh, don't go through it slowly enough. Uh, so I'm gonna really do it painstakingly. So apologies in advance, but it will be useful to people who are just starting off. So we start. Um, oh, and also it's, it's worth pointing out that there are tons of different like variations on Cripple Creek. Uh, so the, what I'm playing now might be different to another one you've seen somewhere. They are they are all subtly different. None of them are wrong, but they're all a bit different. So this is the way I play it most of the time. I might throw a little variation in here or there, but this is the way I'm going to teach it. So yeah, there we go. So we start. We're going to want to hit the top D string by itself. Now we're going to fret it at the 4th fret, so just, I would use your 2nd finger, fret it on the 4th fret, and then just start off with literally just practice hitting that top string by itself. And I'm being like purposely sloppy here, you don't need to be accurate at all. The advantage of the banjo being tuned to an open G is that you don't really need to think too accurately most of the time. So, we're, we're aiming for this top string, but if you're have to hit a bunch of strings in order to hit it, that's fine. It's better to hit too many strings than too few strings. So don't worry about accuracy, really. Just do this. In a way, ideally, we're just hitting this top string. But if you hit a few, it's fine. So just get used to that feeling. Keep it like a nice big motion right through the string. Really, when I'm doing it, that finger goes right through the string and hits off there. And this thumb always lands. I'm really specific about this when I'm teaching people. Uh, I'm really pedantic about it. Make sure this thumb every time lands like that. Um, so you're doing that. Do that a bit. Just get used to that feeling. Nice wide strokes here on this right hand. And then hit slide. Well, let's just tackle the slide first, actually. Slide. When you slide there, well, the slide comes from the wrist firstly. rather. So you're not just doing it from the fingers. And you're not really moving your whole arm. It's... It's just the wrist. It'll take a while to get used to that. Um, but the important thing, the really important thing here is hit, slide, and at the same time as you're sliding, this hand comes up. Because this hand always just wants to be going up and down 99% of the time, just doing this to keep the rhythm going. So hit, slide, and now it's here, and we're ready to go back down again. All, hit all the strings whilst keeping this finger on, and then pluck. So I've gone through quite a bit there. So really what you're doing in slow motion is hit, slide, this hand comes up at the same time, hit, slide, all, pluck. So there's four sounds to that first little phrase, hit, slide, all, pluck, hit, slide, all, pluck, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and you'll notice this hand just goes up and down each time, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, when you pluck, again I say this all the time, pluck up, don't pluck down, don't pluck out really, out a little bit, but mainly up, which kind of doesn't make sense, but again, if you've seen my other videos, I talk about it there, if you haven't seen them, go watch them, um, but yeah, pluck up, I go into more detail in most of the videos that I've done so far really, um, down, so hit, fourth fret, slide, now, it might feel like we're going through this painstakingly, but trust me, if this is the first tune you're learning, which well, it probably is, um, we need to go through it really slowly like this. Luckily, the next phrase is very similar. Um, it's actually easier, I think. So, once we've done that, four, slide, all, pluck. 
we go second fret, and again, don't worry too much about accuracy, just hit them all if you have to. Second fret, pull off, all pluck. And again, that pull off happens at the same time as this hand coming up. Hit, pull off, all pluck. Hit, pull off, all pluck. Again, nice big motions with this. Hand is always down, up, down, up. And don't worry about accuracy, just don't worry about it all, be sloppy. Um, well, I played Cripple Creek at the start of this video, right, so... That's playing it accurately. If I play it really sloppily... It doesn't sound that different, really. It still works. That's why we just don't want to worry too much about right-hand accuracy. Eventually, you'll want to worry about this a little bit, but you have to do that after after you've gotten through all this this stuff so yeah nice and, and just keep it sloppy for now cool so first two phrases together well I, I'll, I'll just say as well what you want to do is practice phrase one on repeat a bit try to do it without a pause between them so don't go don't pause there just try to get like this and take it nice and slow one and two and one and two and and in fact start even slower than that to start off with um yeah, one and two and one and two and and then the second phrase, practice that separately. One and two and one and two and and then combine them. One and two and then combine them. First phrase and second phrase and then repeat it again without a pause between the repetitions. So one and two and three and four. Again, not worrying too much about the accuracy of this. Sometimes you'll hit one string and sometimes you'll hit all. Err on the side of sloppiness for this rather than accuracy, so. And for now, keep it really quite big, like robust, almost flamboyant, like right hand style. Don't try to be too accurate. Keep it nice big motions, because that will really ingrain the habit into you that you want to keep this just up and down constantly. So, first two phrases. And then the next one uh, is the C chord. So I've, I've talked about the C chord in other lessons. Uh, I'm not going to go into it in loads of detail here, but basically, second fret of the high D string, then the first fret of the B string. That would do. We can just play that and get away with it. But if you want to play the full one, you also put this uh, second finger on the second fret of the low D string. So for now, just play it like this. And that's C, C, G. Nice and easy. So you get this. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. So that bit is one, two on the C and then three and four, the count of three and four on the, uh, on the open G, but you just play it once. So it's one, two, three, four. Just hold it for a bit. Uh, and that's like the first half of the first half of the tune. Second bit of this tune. Uh, we start now, and the pattern all the way through this is actually fundamentally the same. It's always one and two, and it's always a dumb ditty with this right hand. So it's always... And then once we get to the other phrases, it's actually fundamentally the same rhythm. We're just doing it at different parts uh, and just changing it subtly. So here, we hit the second fret of the G string. And again, just, just start off literally just doing that getting used to the, uh, the feeling of that. And again, err on the side of hitting a bunch of strings, so this is hard to be accurate at first, so don't worry too much about it. Just do this, and it's perfectly fine. Second fret of that G string, just hit it like this. Nice big right hand motion, as usual. Do this. Ah, thumb always lands, thumb always comes off. Even if you're not plucking, thumb always comes off. So you get this. And that's me being quite sloppy. And now what we do is second and then hammer on to the fourth fret. And the same deal here, hit, hammer, and hand comes up at the same, right hand comes up at the same time as the hammer on. And now keeping that finger on, all pluck. So you see how it's the same pattern as before. You hit something, hammer on, all pluck. Hit, sorry, hit, hammer, all pluck. And that's that phrase, hit, hammer, all pluck. Um, yeah, so once you hammered on, keep it on to hit all the strings like that. 
but importantly, take this finger off. He doesn't need to come flying off, but hit, hammer. It's it's not staying on the fret there. It kind of, it's almost like a seesaw between these two fingers. Hit, second fret, hammer on. So it kind of comes off a bit. I hope that makes sense. Hit, hammer, all pluck. And then the next phrase, hit, second fret again of the G string, pull off, all pluck. The exact same pattern, just pulling off this time. Hit, hammer, hit, pull off, and again, watch this right hand motion. I'm exaggerating it. I'm exaggerating it so you can see it, but also because that's what you should be doing at this point. Hit, pull off, all pluck. This hand comes up at the same time as the pull off. Uh, yeah, it's super important. And I keep repeating it, but trust me, you will forget to do it. And it is important enough that I'm willing to be annoying <laughs> um, to make sure you remember it. Hit, pull off, all pluck. Cool. So, so far we've got this. Sorry, so we're up to there. So, so far we have this. That's what we've got so far. And then this last little bit, oh sorry, I meant to say. Also, just take that phrase and repeat it. So, you might just want to take this small little bit. Repeat that until you get used to it. And then the next one, individually. And then, the whole thing. And then, actually the entire bit so far. So, even now when I'm learning things, um, I will take a phrase and I'll learn that, and then I'll take the next phrase and learn that, and then I'll combine the two, and then repeat that, etc, etc. So I, it, it can be painstaking, but yeah, it's just what you have to do, basically. Obviously, like when I'm doing it, it's more complicated things, but there's always some things where I need to do that, where I need to just break it down to a phrase, a phrase, combine the two phrases, and it just gets, you know, the phrases that you're practicing get bigger and bigger. Um, but yeah, it is really important. It can be painstaking, but just take it a bit of time and put consistent practice in rather than trying to put in like, you know, loads of practice one day and then forget about it for a while. Take your time with it. Um, last phrase of part A. Luckily, we'll get on to part B in a second. Luckily, part B is basically just a cannibalization of part A, really. So we've kind of learned all the phrases once we've done this. Uh, the last phrase of part A, we hit the low D string. And again, same thing, I would encourage you to you know, get used to this feeling a bit. Nice big motion, hand always comes up and down. Thumb always lands. That's what we're doing, just hitting that low D string. And now we want to slow it right down, because what we're doing is hit, hammer onto the second fret. And just get used to that. I'm not plucking at all, just hit, hammer, hit, hammer. Play even slower than what I'm doing right now. Take it nice and slow. Hit, hammer, hit, hammer. And that hammer happens at the same time as your hand comes up again. I'm repeating it a lot, but trust me, you'll forget it and I need to repeat it a lot. Hit, hammer, hit, hammer. And then once we've done that, hit, oops, sorry, wrong string, hit, hammer, and then we hit that second fret, hit, so you get this, one and two, hit, hammer, hit, and then after that hit, we hammer onto the fourth fret, so we get this, hit, hammer, hit, hammer, that's what it'll sound like, this, people find this quite tricky, um, because you've got this kind of weird phrase where you're hitting, hitting and hammering and hitting and then hammering. So you get the dun dun dun. Um, people do find it a bit tricky at first, so to be patient with yourself. Hit, hammer, hit, hammer. Open, second, second, fourth. Open, second, second, fourth. Hit, hammer, hit, hammer. And then we finish by just hitting all the strings. Open, take your hand off it there and hit them all. You don't need to take it right off like I did there. I did that flamboyantly. Don't do that. <laughs> just take it off. A little bit. Hit, hammer, hit, hammer, all. Open, second, second, four, all. And again, take it phrase, like maybe two notes at a time, three notes at a time, then four notes at a time, then the entire phrase. And then you can just repeat this. And again, it's like anything, just bit by bit, 
enough that you can kind of like uh, take it on and then the next bit and then combine all. And then that's all the part A we've got now, so. And again, you heard I didn't quite hit it properly there. I don't worry about it. Banjo, you're not aiming for perfection with the claw hammer banjo yet, so you'll make tons of mistakes. I still do, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, that's all of part A. Just take that and repeat it. So you could leave. You could just work on this for a week, actually, without even thinking about part B. In fact, I would definitely do that. I would take it phrase by phrase a little bit, just a little bit at a time. And again, as ever, focus more on getting the technique right, which is like nice, big right-hand motions um, and thumb always landing, thumb always coming off. Focus on that rather than pure right-hand accuracy. If you're aiming for one string, but you hit two, it's not going to be a problem. We tune to G. The song's in G. Nothing's going to sound too bad. It's going to sound fine. So, yeah. Keep that in mind and just work on those a little bit at a time. And then when you're ready to get on to part B, um, well, then you can go on to part B. But yeah, take a little bit longer than you might expect it to need before moving on to part B. That's what I would recommend. Um, anyway, part B, as I said, we just cannibalized part A to get part B. So uh, you will remember this little phrase. Oh, you'll remember this little phrase. Uh. So that's that second fret G. Hammer onto four, all pluck. This is what we started, and it kind of makes up the bulk of this part B. Hit, hammer, all pluck, and then we go hit, pull off, all pluck. And this is how part B goes. I did not play it particularly well there, but this is how it goes. So it's that phrase, hit, hammer, all, pluck, hit, pull off, all, pluck. It's basically twice, but the second time round, instead of doing the hit, pull off, all, pluck, we just hit it all. So hit, hammer, all, pluck, hit, pull off, all, pluck, hit, hammer, all, pluck. And again, this is this is how it goes. Hit, hammer, all, pluck, hit, pull off, all, pluck. Hit, hammer, all, pluck, all. Nice and simple, really. And then that again. Just that bit. And then we do that weird little... Uh... So, again. Hit, hammer, all, pluck, hit, pull off, all, pluck. Hit, hammer, all, pluck, all. Hit, hammer, all, pluck, hit, pull off, all, pluck. God, I completely messed up the rhythm there. But once I slow this tune down, I, I, I just forget how to play it. Actually, what I did there is I added a little strum extra into um, one of the bits, but don't worry about that, so I'll simplify it. All pluck, hit, pull off, all pluck, hit, hammer, all pluck, all. Hit, hammer, all pluck, hit, pull off, all pluck, hit, hammer, hit, hammer, all. <sighs> yeah, that's how it goes. Um, hopefully, it wasn't too fast for you, but I'll put a tab in the link below which um, I would recommend people work from a little bit if they can. Um, but yeah, hopefully, that all makes sense. Um, I think actually it does, yeah, it does need this kind of pin sticking approach. Um, and now I'm thinking I might have still gone even too fast for that. Um, but seriously, just take it bit by bit. And if you have any questions, just leave in the comment below and I'll, I'll try to help you through it a bit. Um, yeah, it's worth taking your time with this one just to get it right. Because again, and I am very repetitive, I, I am aware of that. But again, this uses so much that is actually used in um, Klohama Banjo as a whole. So it's really worth just getting each bit right. You've got the dumb ditties, you've got single string stuff, you've got the kind of rhythm, you've got chords, slides, hammer-ons, pull-offs, tons of stuff. And as you get better, and as you've learned the tune, uh, it's a good starting point to learn like more interesting musical vocabulary, because it starts off really like just simple. Um, everything's within the scale, the way I play it here. But you know, as, as we get better, we can make it sound bluesy, you know? Slightly different sound, but that takes a little bit of practice. 
Um, but it's just another reason why it's a great starting point as a song, because you can just do these little twists on it. And if you really want to get weird with it, if you really want to get weird with it. Ooh, strange. Um, but yeah, you can get you can get kind of freaky with it. Anyway, that is us. Hopefully this was helpful, uh, and I'll see you soon.